celebration of service. Uh, our fellows are upstairs now uh, enjoying probably what many would say is the best part of the fellowship, talking to each other, uh, and so we need to pull them down here. That's why we're starting a little bit late, um, but we have uh, sent someone up to get them. Uh, tonight really is a celebration of these fellows who are completing, in most cases, a year uh, at their host organizations. I will have an opportunity to uh, hear from some fellows from the class speaker is a good friend of mine and former host organization, uh, leads a former host organization. And then we'll do certificates, and uh, they're, all, they're receiving some other awards at the end that are given. So it'll be a fun night. Um, we really appreciate everyone coming tonight to support the fellows, and particularly all the current fellows who have come out to see their fellow fellows graduate. Uh, for the fellows in the room, this will be you in four months or eight months. Uh, and so as time is going by really quickly in this period of time, I uh, just realize that it gets even faster. Um, you can sort of picture yourselves when you're, when you're up here. I was trying to figure out I was going to stall for like two minutes or stall for like ten minutes. Then I'll give a longer address. Ten minutes it looks like, right? Okay, good. Um, how many of you, this is your first Atlas Core event? A handful, okay. Great. Uh, well, so uh, it's really an exciting year for us at Atlas Core because not only is it the graduation of our class 18 and soon the arrival of our 21st, but it's actually our 10th year of operations. 10 years ago, um, I left the Department of State with a vision that was pretty simple. And then all around the world, there are smart, talented, passionate people who want to make the world a better place, uh, but they don't have the opportunities to do so. What I saw in living in India and Pakistan and Colombia and Mexico and other places around the world, big cities and small towns and wealthy countries and more developing ones, talent is universally distributed. But opportunity is not. And as a white male born with a US passport, I could go volunteer in 160 different countries and not even need a visa to get on a plane or land in that country. The aspiring leader from India, uh, that youth development leader from Mexico, the the, the Palestinian leader who's fighting for the rights of others. Same isn't true all around the world. So at Atlas Core, we start with this basic premise to find the world's most talented social change leaders and give them an opportunity to come here and serve, to learn from these organizations, but also share their perspectives and ideas, ultimately graduate, 
as we are celebrating today, and go back home to their countries to address critical social issues. This is our 18th class. Most of our class 18 are graduating tonight, and our 10th year of operations. And with this class that's about to come, class 21, it gets confusing because we do it three times a year. We will have gotten up to 500 leaders from 76 different countries, and we are literally just getting started. Comes, we're expanding and reaching new countries. Class 21 is a fellow from Cuba. Pretty exciting. So if you're having fun tonight, come back on Wednesday, May 25th, 25th class 21, uh, in this exact same location, in fact. Um, as we expand to new countries and reach new leaders, we begin the nonprofit sector globally. And through that, through this exchange with amazing host organizations and amazing leaders, one leader at a time, we're able to strengthen the sector and provide opportunities for those leaders who wouldn't otherwise have it. Other countries, they're able to provide those opportunities for countless more people as they go back. I think now, if someone's, did they hear someone? Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> I can keep going. Uh, as they've done their networking upstairs, and for some of them, their final couple of days in the United States. I want to have you join me in welcoming Class 18 and 19 as we can kick off their celebration of service tonight. So welcome Class 18 and 19. of service. Tonight we are here to celebrate. We celebrate overcoming some of the low moments and relishing some of the high points on a continuous journey for an inspiring group of global leaders. We remember the professional achievements, personal milestones, and cultural awareness building activities that mark the journey of the Atlas Core Fellowship. We are also here to thank all of you guys tonight. You all played a valuable role during this experience. Whether you're a host organization supervisor, a local ambassador, a friend, a colleague, or an embassy representative, you all contributed to the overall Atlas Core experience. Tonight, as we celebrate these fellows, I invite you all to reflect on the key role that you played. The true value of the Atlas Core Fellowship is shared experience, living with purpose, and joining a lifelong network because once a fellow, always a fellow. So let's celebrate this dynamic group of fellows who have completed their service with Atlas Corps and who will continue to inspire others and improve the world in their long-term careers. And officially welcoming all of our Atlas Corps fellows graduating tonight. We are so excited to welcome you here because tonight is all about celebrating you. We celebrate all that you've achieved and all that you will achieve as you continue to inspire others through your work. Tonight is a bittersweet moment for us all. It's a time to say goodbye to those cherished contacts that you've made during your fellowship experience. The people who have made up your community, your family, and really your life while serving here in the U.S. But tonight is also a time to celebrate your growth during the last 12 months, both professional and personal. We celebrate your determination and your dedication to the social sector, despite having to leave your family and your previous jobs behind, all, as well as all that you've learned. We're incredibly proud of all of you and incredibly thrilled that you will forever be a part of our Atlas Core family. You guys can sit down. <laughs> A 
as you transition back home, the big picture of what Atlas Core means in the world, and hopefully what Atlas Core means in your professional and personal develop, development, excuse me, will take time to unveil itself. While you may not be serving side by side in the US with your fellow fellows as time progresses, know that you are no longer going through life's journey alone. You will always be an Atlas Core <coughs> fellow, and there will always be other fellows and members of the community willing to support you no matter where you may be. Of course, tonight is more about reflection and celebration than it is about future planning. And who better to provide firsthand perspective of the past year than one of these fellows sitting here before you. Uh, in fact, this class is actually so awesome that they decided not to have just one, but two class speakers. So please join me in wel welcoming Feluso Ashola, an Atlas Core Fellow from Nigeria, who served at Susan G. Komen for the Cure, and Marcella Kaye, an Atlas Core Fellow from Colombia, who served at Internews. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Polusio Ishola, uh, after school fellow from Nigeria, and I started to the G-Comment in Dallas, Texas. Today marks the end of a year-long journey, a year of discovery, and a year of self-awareness, a year of pushing boundaries, physically, emotionally, and intellectually. I remember when I was living in Nigeria a year ago, uh, my dad had some advice for me when he learned I was going to be in Texas. He said, Folusho, be very careful. Those Texans are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> they shoot first and ask questions later. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, his knowledge of the United States and Texas in particular had been influenced by the media. <laughs> News of gunshots, open carry, police brutality, was all he ever had on the news. But I'm glad that I'll be going home and I'll be regaling him, regaling him of uh, news of great experiences I've had while in Texas, it's, it's, while in Texas. And, I, and that I almost became a Texan. <laughs> As with other fellows today, I'm glad that this year has been one of growth, both professionally and personally. I had the opportunity to serve uh, with a great host organization, Sudan G. Komen, one of the best known and most funded breast cancer organizations in the United States. I worked on implementing breast and cervical cancer control programs in hard to reach communities, both in the United States and in Sub Saharan Africa. I learned and I developed myself. I also got to meet interesting individuals. In particular, I made an effort to know my next door neighbor, Thomas. After watching him through my blinds for a week, ruminating over his peculiar style of dressing, <laughs> Thomas, uh, a gay guy, surprisingly, had a lot in common with me. We both loved the classics, and we became... We argued passionately uh, on why a police to kill a mockingbird is a classic, and why Margaret Mitchell's Gone with the Wind was also a classic. I learned that an open mind is one of the valuable assets you can possess. I learned to judge less and listen more. I learned that humanity transcends race, transcends nationality, and transcends gender orientation, and that people take different roads to seek fulfillment and happiness. And just because they are not on your road doesn't mean they are lost. We all faced adversities this year and we prevailed. Some fellows struggled with their health and that of their loved ones at home. Some fellows struggled with the weather, dressing up like Eskimos during the winter. Some fellows struggled uh, navigating their way around DC, getting lost occasionally. While some struggled with loneliness and missed loved ones, and almost all of us struggled to make ends meet. <laughs> but despite this, we've had wonderful experience. Fellows have attended and presented in international conferences worldwide. 
fellows have some fellows skydived. <laughs> some fellows learn to ride a bicycle. Some learn to skate. And in my case, I finally learned to swim. <laughs> and above all, we made long lasting friendship. Friendship that would last a lifetime. As we all prepare to head home, we are plagued with different emotions. The joy of seeing loved ones again. Never said about acclimatizing to an environment we left a year ago, a vast country shock. Yeah. And the fear of getting a good job on time when we get home. But we are also confident. We are confident that the skills we've learned will come in handy as we face new challenges. We are confident that we will return home and build our communities, strengthen our country, and become the great leaders we are destined to be. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Marcela Cadio from Colombia, and I'm a class at Oxford Fellow Class 18, and I have the honor to step right to the interview. First, I want to thank my fellow fellows for choosing me to be one of your voices today. During this time, I had the honor of and pleasure to meet the most talented and inspiring social leaders from different countries who share a part of their cultures with me. Invite me to celebrate their holidays and traditions and have inspired me from day one through their causes, their words, and their beliefs. Fellows are the gem of this experience. My fellow fellows have been masters in this path, have become our family, our biggest supporters, both in, time, in times of crisis and in times of joy. And I feel blessed and honored to have shared this journey with each, each one of you. I also want to thank the Atlas for family for your work and support. This fellowship is once in a lifetime opportunity that provides us with the training and skills or to a large network of social, economic, and political fields. So I hope these 10 years are just the beginning of a long path that will help, that will help young leaders like all of us to find their voices and share their ideas to build a better world. I still remember all the support, the kind words, and the good energy from my fellow fellows and from the, all the Atlas for staff and from my host organization internet when I had the opportunity to be part of, the, of a panel during the social good zone. Probably nervous like today. And, but as Maja Angelou said, people will, will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And you, my fellow fellows and my Atlas for family, made me feel like a rose rock star that day and I'm deeply grateful for that. Lastly but not least I want to thank all the host organizations to take the risk to host a foreign fellow. You are opening your doors to the most talented and creative people. As, and as we said in my country, Colombia, the only risk is that you want to keep them. <laughs> I particularly want to thank Internews, an incredibly host organization that has allowed me to expand my professional horizons. And, and I had the opportunity to learn every single day, not only from the job and the research I was doing, but from my awesome supervisor and colleague. I just want to end saying thank you for all the love, thank you for all the wisdom and joy. Uh, that you shared during this past year. This intercultural exchange and professional experience has been one of the most enriching experiences of my life. And as well for all my class 18 fellow, fellows and class 19 who are, who are finishing their service today. And a very special shout out to Julie for being always there for us. <laughs> Uh, awesome, thank you guys very much. That was fantastic. Uh, I always feel bad for the speaker that we invite because invariably they speak after the, the fellow or fellows speak and it's kind of a, it's a high bar. So it's like I'm doing it to a friend tonight. Uh, a friend whose bio I didn't fully know, um, Ben Powell, who's a, an amazing nonprofit leader and Ashoka Fellow, uh, runs an incredible nonprofit called Agora Partnerships, which 
in the past has taken Atlas Core Fellows and in the future has taken Atlas Core Fellows. And we know each other partially through my so Ashoka affiliation. We're also both Georgetown grads. Uh, but just a, a huge amount of mutual respect, or hopefully mutual, huge amount of respect uh, for the work that he's done uh, over the years in the sector. Uh, I wanted to invite Ben to come speak tonight to uh, wish you guys off as your commencement uh, speaker tonight. Uh, so, Ben Powell from Agora Partnerships. Great. Um, well, it is a real honor to be here. It's very exciting for me. Um, thank you for having me here. Uh, the first thing I would just like to do is to thank all of you. And I want to thank you on a couple levels. I'd like to thank you on the, the level of kind of global citizen. I think all of us in this room recognize that our world has tremendous challenges, tremendous strain all across the world. Um, you're seeing that, especially in this country right now, and hopefully uh, you've been able to learn a little bit about um, some of the challenges and opportunities here in the US. But I'm just so excited that you are going back to your countries to take what you have learned and to bring your energy and your leadership back to your country. And so as, a, as someone who likes to think of themselves um, as having one identity of being a global citizen, I want to thank all of you for going back and helping to fix and repair this beautiful world that we have, but this world that has so many challenges. Also, um, as an American citizen, I would like to thank you. All of you have come and spent a year working to help uh, improve key institutions in our civil society. And um, that is a real gift that you have given us uh, in, in our country. And so I want to thank you for that service. And then finally, um, as a citizen of the District of Columbia, I know many of you have worked here uh, to help strengthen this city. Uh, I uh, have uh, three kids. They were all born in this city. and. Um, we are a city that is looking out always to the rest of the world and the rest of the country. And we often don't uh, look at our own city and how we can improve it. So thank you for your service, those of you who are here in this seat. Um, I had a really interesting conversation with Scott uh, just before this. And he was showing me on the board um, a very interesting list of values. And these are values that you guys kind of uh, had when you came. And then maybe they changed a little bit after your time here. And it's interesting, one of the ones that was very low, low value for all of you was punctuality. And uh, you know, that didn't change much. If anything, you had less caring about punctuality after your time here. Um, and a lot of them didn't change that much, but there was one that changed significantly and it just left off of the board. And this was standing up for what you do. And I think in the beginning, there wasn't anyone who valued that on a scale as high as some other very important other values, like honesty or otherwise. But at the end, it was almost like there was like 12. It was like the fact, it was one of the highest things. And I'm sure there's a backstory from there. But it really spoke to me. And, um, and so I wanted to just make a couple of remarks to try to give you a little bit of my own experience and counsel around you can go and stand up for you. And I know that all of you, when you go back home, um, you know, things will be different and things will be challenging. And um, I can tell you for sure that your Atlas community can be a source of strength. Uh, the social capital that you have earned uh, in this group is really important. And I hope that you use that it really strategically going forward. But I just wanted to tell you uh, four core values that um, I've come to believe are some of the most important core values for any leader who is trying to go and create social change in this world. And then I will tell you at the end who I think, just so you can have something concrete um, to remember in this thought. I'll tell you who I think is the American who um, probably is the most influential social entrepreneur in our history. And obviously, this is a subjective um, opinion, 
but um, I'm going to offer it to you in the hopes that it speaks to you and maybe you learn more about this individual. But I'll get to that towards the end, keep a little bit of suspense. So what are the core four core values? There are four of them that I want to talk about, which I feel like um, if you can incorporate these values into your life, um, they're going to help make you a better leader and they're going to help you to stand up for what you believe which is uh, one of the most important things you can do because it's the essence of human dignity is being able to advocate for yourself and do what you think is right. So the first core value that I think is so important is the value of empathy. And uh, we live in a world where people talk across each other, do not understand each other. And so we create all of these artificial divisions and I'm sure that many of you know exactly what I'm talking about. And so as you go back, please think about what, um, what is it about somebody else or about a different way of thinking or believing or being you know, that, that can create distance. And how can you destroy that distance and understand, as one of our speakers talked about, the shared humanity that we all have. I think one thing that happens when you get to be with people who are different from you is you recognize actually we really are 95% all the same. We all care about the, the things that are important in life. We care about. We all do. But we create these artificial divisions. So please keep hold that empathy because it is a core attribute of leadership in the 21st century. And it's something that we need more and more people uh, modeling. And I think you guys are the perfect people to model that. The second core value is um, the value of agency, self-agency. And that means the ability to decide that you want to act and then act. So one of the huge, this is actually a strength, a relative strength of the United States, I think, which is that there is a culture that says, I can make a difference, I can create change, and I'm going to go and I'm going to do it. And if I fail, I can survive that failure. Now, I know that in many countries in the world, particularly in Latin America, which is the part of the world that I know best outside of the US, there is a stigma to failure. And uh, there is a sense that the horizon of possibility of what you can achieve is actually pretty low. And this keeps people down. And so it is so important whether you're a for profit business entrepreneur or you're a social change leader, to have that self-agency and to know for a fact that you can go and make a difference. And that if you fail, you will just learn more and you'll become stronger. And so please hold that. All of you who've gone through this program, you have agency, you've already, you're here. And as you go back, keep that uh, in your heart because there's nothing more powerful than knowing that you can make a difference no matter what comes your way. The third value um, I'd like to share with you is uh, the value of curiosity. The reason for many problems in the world is people are not curious. They don't ask themselves, why did we get to this stage? Why is it this way? How could it be better? And so asking questions and training yourself to always be thinking, how could, how could this be better? Why is it this way? Interrogating the status quo of your countries um, is critical. And we have to do this, of course, in the United States as well. And, and I think we're beginning to, to do this more and more as we go through a very interesting uh, political time in this country. Um, so curiosity is the basis of wonder, uh, and it's, it's the basis of innovation, and it's the basis of change. Um, and then the last one is maybe the most boring and prosaic, but it's maybe the most powerful. And this is perseverance. This is perseverance, which is arguably the most important entrepreneurial quality. But if, all, if you guys are planning on going back and changing your country, you're going to have to change the minds of a lot of people. You're going to have to change the institutions that you work for. You're going to encounter all kinds of resistance. And you are going to have to be down with persevering and overcoming. And um, this, this is the single most um, correlated 
attribute of successful entrepreneurs in the world is perseverance. And so, just to give you one example of uh, somebody that I think is a great American who um, we don't think about because he died a long, long time ago, and it just seems like an old, dead white guy. But he is someone who I, at least myself, draw inspiration from. He also was the, um, he was the, uh, uh, he's the first American in the Swimming Hall of Fame. So just a, a, a congratulations to learning how to swim. Uh, this, this was probably the greatest swimmer of our founding fathers. And so um, the guy I'm talking about is, um, is a guy named Benjamin Franklin. And he is a guy who certainly uh, stood for what he believed. Um, and he was a guy who was able to affect tremendous change basically through perseverance, hard work, um, and, um, and always trying to think about how can I make my community better? How can I make my community better? And we don't, when we think of Ben Franklin, we kind of think of him as this, you know, guy who had something to do with electricity and he was involved in the revolution and I think he had a printing press. But this was a guy who did more than probably any other American to, to create this idea that you can better yourself and improve yourself, frugality, with hard work, um, with, um, uh, with, with always trying to think about how can I improve my community. And so I hope that as you go back to your home countries and you think about you know, what you took from this experience here in America, um, think about reading about Ben Franklin. Um, I think there's knowledge and wisdom in his life that, um, that is strength for me. And that is completely universal because of all the founding fathers, if you had to ask who was the most cosmopolitan, who was the most global and international, it was by far Benjamin Franklin. So he would be the founding father who would say, what you guys are doing here is amazing and would be supporting you and honoring you guys. So the last thing I'll say is, as you go back to the hard work of social change, Please know that the world needs more leaders like you. We desperately need leadership in this world. And leaders are not born. Leaders make themselves slowly but surely. And so I think you are on the right path, having participated in this great program. And as you go back to your countries, I just wish you the strength, the fortitude. Have fun. Keep in touch with each other. And thank you again for everything that you're doing to improve um, your country and the world. It's a real honor to be able to address you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ben, for those inspiring words. Um, and now I'd like to ask Scott to come up and help me with some of the Atlas for Honors that we'll be distributing this evening. The first one is for our distinguished partner in global service. For Atlas Core, our host organizations go beyond just a placement site for our fellows. They're dynamic partners in our mission to utilize global service as a means to develop leaders, strengthen organizations, and promote innovation. They host our fellows and they serve as a valuable resource to our entire network. We are so thrilled to have host organizations like Results whose mission aligns so perfectly with ours. Like Atlas Core, one of Result's key practices involves empowering communities and their leaders. Results has hosted several fellows, two of whom are graduating tonight, and they have sponsored a special delegation of fellows for their annual conference. This year, Atlas Core is proud to be a sponsor for their hands-on advocacy conference that will be held in DC in June. We look forward to helping achieve Result's vision of creating a world free from poverty. So please join me in recognizing our distinguished partner in global service, Results. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, um, what, what is the picture here? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> 
situation that you have to Beautiful. I like this. I would just sure. Great. Thank you. Um, I was inspired by the other speakers, so I'll just say two things on behalf of uh, the uh, post organizations. Um, the first is that we've heard a lot about sticking up for what you believe in. And what I would say to you, um, who are the uh, the fellows in the future classes, um, continue to advocate for yourself while you're here. I think the thing that we learned very much from both of the fellows that were with results was that they were excellent advocates for themselves and for our organization. And I remember when Sadia, who unfortunately isn't here tonight, uh, some of the other uh, Atlas Core fellows to attend our conference and she first came to me and said, I think results needs to sponsor a couple of spots in our conference for my fellow fellows. And I said, sure, that's fine. Are they friends of yours? And she said, sort of. And I said, are they in your Atlas Core family? And she said, distant cousins, but yeah, they're, they're part of my family. And so I said, sure, we can have a couple of people. And then Sonia came back about a week later and she said, I'd like to tell you that I think it's really important that you let a few more people come to our conference. <laughs> and after we had uh, the entire uh, distant relatives of Sadia uh, in the Atlas Core tree that you have um, attending our conference, I realized how wonderful it was that she had learned, or perhaps she had the skill when she arrived, to advocate on behalf of herself and her fellows. So I would just say take advantage of the opportunities that you have here while you're with us in the States ask if you can do things. Um, so, uh, if it's not, she is another uh, great advocate for herself and was very active um, just within weeks of arriving at our, our organization. And then the other thing that just struck me as a host organization is we had a little get together for um, Ifni and Sadia before they left and people were asking Ifni what she had learned from us during her year. And the interesting thing was that after she talked about the weather and some of the other uh, social uh, norms, people started to pipe up about what they had learned from Ifasnachi during this year. And the number of things that we learned from our fellow by far exceeded the things that she learned from us. And so I'm reminded, um, I forget who said to me at the very beginning of our association with Atlas Court, that this is, um, you know, this is, these are mid-career professionals. These are not interns. These are people who have life experiences and leadership experiences that they can bring to bear on your organization. And we certainly found out with both of our fellows. So very honored to accept this on behalf of results. We're very sad to see our two um, fellows leading us, but we're looking forward to a long association with Alice Ford. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, we also have a, a brief award. It's our uh, Ben's introduction. Uh, our distinguished supporter in global service. Uh, we'd like to recognize uh, a supporter of Atlas Core who helps us expand our work. And with this class, we want to recognize the Open Road Alliance. Uh, and so, uh, the support for the Open Road Alliance is a, it's a fascinating funder. Uh, their real purpose is to help uh, organizations overcome hurdles or challenges that were unexpected. Uh, sometimes, very often, they're negative. I suppose sometimes they're positive. In our case, a little over a year ago, uh, we were uh, blessed with the opportunity to partner with the White House as part of the Emerging Global Leaders Initiative Atlas Core Fellowship. And that's, that partnership had State Department sending a cable or a report to every U.S. Embassy and consulate around the world. We were somewhat afraid our applications would be overwhelmed, uh, which in many ways they were. So we went to the Open Road Alliance and said, our current application system cannot handle this. Uh, we need, this is an amazing opportunity for us, but it's really also a significant challenge. It could be a huge problem. Uh, so they gave us support to uh, bring on this new application system, which we have in place now. And it's also allowed us to franchise and expand our work. So we use the same application system for people volunteering in Colombia. So if you want to volunteer in Colombia, even if you're a US citizen, you can. Uh, and Australia. We have our first Atlas Core Fellow from Kenya, uh, who's serving in Australia right now. Uh, in no small part because of support. I'd like to invite Maya up here to uh, receive this uh, recognition. Thank 
you, Scott. And um, thank you, everybody. And congratulations, class of 18, 19, 20. <laughs> um, I just want to say thank you very much on behalf of, of Open Road Alliance. Um, as Scott mentioned, we are a funder. Um, we're a grant maker. We're a, a foundation uh, founded by Lori Michaels, uh, based out of Aspen, Colorado. Um, and for those of you in the audience who are familiar with the social sector and, and the work that goes on behind the scenes and sort of the funder model that we have here in the U.S., uh, you know that it's a, and sometimes be a challenging relationship. Uh, as Scott mentioned, our focus is a little different than some other funders. Uh, we don't ha have a specific geography we focus on. We don't have a specific sector we focus on. We'll find anything, anywhere because what we're interested in is impact. And impact happens when you let people with great ideas just pursue their ideas. Uh, and we really believe that. And what was incredible about our partnership with Atlas Core and our ongoing partnership with Atlas Core is we were able to do this incredible thing of just supporting them. And when Abby and Scott uh, reached out to us a couple of weeks ago and said that they would like to present this this award to us. Uh, certainly, are filled with gratitude, uh, but mostly I was just filled with the overwhelming feeling of sort of asking why, because I wrote a check, but you did the work. And each one of you here has done the work for the past year. And each one of you in the audience that is an incoming fellow is about to do the work for the next year. And as all of you go home, you're going to do the work next year, and the year after, and the year after, and the year after, and the year after. And because of your work, we're going to have safer communities, and healthier communities, and richer communities, and open communities. So I appreciate the award, and I am honored to accept it. But if there's any award, I accept it on behalf of all of you, because you guys are the ones that are really making this world a better place. So thank you. So our last award is our Distinguished Volunteer in Global Service. Award. Um, this is given to an Atlas Core volunteer or volunteers who have gone above and beyond in their contributions and innovations to Atlas Core. Today, the people that we're going to honor are three very special volunteers who served as local ambassadors in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Alaric Babej, Esther Babej, and Ezra Spitzer um, were local ambassadors who are folks who really serve as first friends for our fellows. So these are volunteers, not affiliated with Atlas Core, who just want to help a fellow get settled when they first arrive. They help them with um, think logistical things, helping them adjust to the culture once they get here. And then they're just that constant point of contact for a fellow. And Atlas Core fellows in satellite cities particularly need these local ambassadors because they don't have the massive fellow community that we have here. So being far away from most of our fellows in DC, it's really important and amazing when we have local ambassadors that go above and beyond, um, like Alir Anyuan's uh, local ambassadors did in. in so <laughs> Alaric, Esther, and Ezra have really done it all, um, whether it was assistance with housing or helping connect Alir to conferences and local activities in Albuquerque really exemplify what it means to be a first friend to an Atlas Core fellow. I think Alir would agree that uh, the three of them have become more than just friends. They're almost like family now. Um, although they obviously can't be here to accept the award because they're in Albuquerque, uh, we want to thank them from the bottom of our hearts because they have shown exemplary service as local ambassadors and I'm sure really enrich the experience for Alir. So thank you. I hope they're tuning into the live stream. Live stream. <laughs> thank you. And with that, I'll pass the mic over to our program's manager, Julie Sherbel, for the recognition of our graduating fellows. All right. So first up, we have.
as Ms. Aditi Mishra, and she was serving as Ms. Aditi Mishra. Aditi's supervisor, and I think there might be a tip on here, Suzanne, um, she said that Aditi has been a wonderful addition to our team at Child Fund. She came to the organization as our team was growing, and with her help, we have seen some huge successes. Aditi continues to, sh to shine as she is helping our team track national and local laws to inform local advocacy efforts across the countries where we work. We're thankful for Aditi's intellect and excitement and are so glad that we have gotten to know her over the last year. Thank you. Congratulations. Next up, we have Adriana Pinheiro Cohen. Adriana's supervisor, Anita, said Adriana has brought her persistence and strong work ethic to Waka Waka over the course of her fellowship, and the team will miss her bright energy and tireless support. Thank you. Next up, we have Arslan Masood Pashbi. He's serving at Disaster Accountability Project. Arslan Supervisor Ben said, in a short time, Arslan became a true member of our team and was involved in nearly every aspect of the organization, a unique role for an Atlas Corps fellow. I felt very comfortable with Arslan representing the organization at key meetings, as we can describe the value of our accountability work in very personal terms. We're so grateful to Arslan for his service over the last year. Although he'll be missed, we hope to continue our friendship and work together. Daniel Friday. <laughs> Daniel served at the American Express Foundation. His supervisor, Wendy, said, it's been a pleasure getting to know and work with Dan over this past year. He's a very thoughtful social purpose leader who cares deeply about his country and having an impact on positive social change. Sense of optimism to his work, which made it refreshing to work with him. I wish him the best in his future endeavors. He'll be missed, but I hope he stays in touch and continues to play an active role in the American Express Leadership Academy Alumni Network. <laughs> Next up, we have Felucio Afizazishola. <laughs> Felucio served as Susan G. Cohen for the Cure in Dallas. Um, Felucio Supervisor Anna said, effective global health requires good global perspective. Felicia provided that to Coleman's international program. We hope that she's taking back some tools with which she can address women's cancers in Nigeria. <laughs> Next up, we have Ganshin Kwok. <laughs> Ganshin Supervisor Milka said, Ganshin has been a wonderful assistant to care. Through hard work, unflagging dedication, and attention to detail, she's provided invaluable support to the team over the past year. We're so glad that she'll be extending her fellowship with us. <laughs> Next up, we have Ifesanachi Sam Amoa. Um, <laughs> Ifesanachi served at Brazil. Her supervisor, Hannah, said, Ifesanachi has brought so much enthusiasm to our team at Action. We've learned so much from her, how advocacy dis differs between the U.S. and Nigeria, what swallow is, a traditional Nigerian dish eaten whole. But most importantly, she reminded us the importance of, of keeping affected communities at the heart of our policy and advocacy. We'll greatly miss Ify and the passion she brings, but know she'll continue to do amazing work improving the lives of women, children, and vulnerable groups. Next up, we have Marcella Taya Garcia. <laughs> Marcella's um, supervisor, Kathleen, said, Marcella exemplifies leadership, ideas, smarts, dedication, teamwork. We're so grateful to Marcella for sharing her amazing career journey with us. Uh, next up, we have 
Nurdeen Puja, who can't join us today, um, but is here in spirit. And um, Nurdeen Supervisor Nancy said, Nurdeen has been such a gift to us. Her bright smile and beautiful personality has made her an easy fit within our organization. She's always willing to help and has a tenacious appetite for learning and improving her skills. It's been an honor to have her here with us. We have Renee Monin-Ost, So, um, Renee was serving at Lutheran Social Service of Minnesota, and Renee's supervisor, Jerry, said, congratulations, Renee. We sincerely appreciate the talents that you have shared with Lutheran Social Service of Minnesota over the past year. Your kind and respectful manner has touched the lives of many people. Next, we have Ms. Sadia Ijaz, who is watching us from Peshawar today. Hi, Sadia. Um, Sadia, said, Sadia brought a unique element of interculturalism to our team and is a wonderful ambassador of Pakistan. She'll be missed. Next, we have Saqib Riyaz. International Center. Socket Supervisor Gretchen said, Socket has been a great addition to the Global Connect team at Meridian International Center. We're very much, we very much valued his contributions to our communication needs and also more broadly to those of Meridian as an organization. His unique perspective and background have enhanced our organization and represented the right type of positive perspective Meridian seeks to impress on its international visitor program. <laughs> Next up, we have Sophia Nosheen. <laughs> Sophia Supervisor Layla said, Sophia has been an energetic, passionate, and enthusiastic contributor to the Malala Fund. We'll miss her very much. <laughs> Next up, we have Subesha Dahal. <laughs> She was serving up next track. And Suvi Supervisor Meredith said, Suvi has been an outstanding member of our team. Her fresh perspective and a cultural confidence have been tremendous assets to our work. From the entire team, Suvi is, in so many words, a courageous, passionate, giving, rises life. I don't know what that means. Cool, <laughs> phenomenal, positive, easygoing, adventurous, joyful, ice skater, snack pirate, and DC Adventure. <laughs> We're so proud of her. <laughs> All right, and next we have Alia Martin Baran. <laughs> Alia served at Community Options Incorporated. And um, Alia Supervisor Bill said that Alia has become an asset to Community Options Inc. You have demonstrated successful fundraising for our Cupid's Chase held in February 2016. Your efforts produced fruit and water that was desperately needed for 146 hundreds of volunteers. You also recruited a new COVAC participant, which isn't an easy task. Your efforts have produced several possibilities for employment for our developmental disability clients. I want to thank you for your positive and fruitful efforts. Again, from Community Options, Issam Muhammad al Hafiz. Issam Supervisor Kim said, Issam brought to our team his cultural perspective, skills from the field, and a willingness to learn and adaptability. We wish him all the best and are grateful for the impact he's made, not only on us, but also our wider community of beneficiaries. Joining us from Sudan, we have Haitham Anur Abdul Hamid Ibrahim. He was serving at National <laughs> So Haitham Supervisor Arpita says, we will never forget Haitham's personality. He challenged our team in ways we never in ways we never would have imagined. And we are stronger for that. We wish him all the best as he continues his work back home. <laughs> Alright, next we have Mayaga Abdullah. Okay, 
Mr. Ian says, my aunt is a joy to work with. Her enthusiasm inspires our social entrepreneurs to open up and share their story. <laughs> Next, serving at Atlas, where we have Mustafa. <laughs>
bittersweet as it is to bid farewell to these inspiring individuals as they go forth into their next step of their professional journeys. It's a consolation to know that their transition also marks the expansion of the Atlas Core Network. Um, class 21 arrives next week. So as Scott mentioned earlier, we invite all of you to join us for our official welcome celebration, which will be next Wednesday, May 25th at 6 p.m. in this exact same location. You should have details in your programs. Uh, as a special highlight of this event, um, as Scott again mentioned earlier, we're celebrating our 10th year anniversary. So we really want to take the time at this event to honor all of our 130 plus post organizations who have been key partners in our growth as an organization and for the experience for all of our fellows. So remember to join us on May 25th. Uh, this concludes tonight's program, fellows. Please stay up here for a little bit. We're going to do some pictures. And everybody else, join us for the reception in the back and wait for your amazing fellows. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, no, it's there. Oh, yeah. 